Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I, the newest Strategic Command game out by Fury Software and published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. This is a different video looking at a game that I've actually covered quite a bit on the channel. Uh, in the past, I've covered the Strategic Command World War II games as well as Strategic Command World War I, and in those videos, I have looked at the grand strategy element of the game, which takes a look at all of Europe. It basically looks at units at a core or army level and allows you to deal with politics, production, research and development over the course of the entire First or Second World War. In today's video, this is the second part of my first attempt to play through one of the operational scenarios. And so while the game has the grand campaign that lets you fight through the war from 1914 to 1918, or it also has other grand sort of campaigns that let you fight through the war in different uh, sort of starting points. This video is looking at the Ludendorff campaign, which is, or scenario, which is one of two scenarios in the game that fundamentally put the game into an operational perspective. So there's a 1914 scenario and there's a 1918 spring scenario. The one we're playing is the 1918 spring scenario, which starts with the German offensives in the spring of 1918, where the Germans used new tactics that they had sort of been trialing in Italy uh, and that they had been trialing in Russia using sort of stormtrooper techniques or, or um, with like flamethrowers and grenades and other things like that to try and change and break out of trench warfare. But this particular scenario, as well as the 1914 scenario, instead of giving you the entire look of all of Europe, instead of giving you dip diplomacy, uh, industry, R&D, and all these other things that you have to worry about, and turns lasting two weeks at a time, this scenario looks just at the Western Front. Everything is cut out, else is cut out. You do still do some R&D, but there's no politics. There's no control over the global situation. It is just a war game at an operational level, looking at the Western Front from the spring of 1918 until the conclusion of the war. And it really changes the way this game plays, and my experience with it is really positive. Frankly, I wish there were more of these scenarios. I wish there was a maybe a Verdun scenario or a uh, Cambrai 1917 scenario or, or something like that. Um, you know, maybe the Somme. I don't know. But I, I think it's a really interesting scenario. It's a really interesting way to change this game and have it play very differently than the, the entire war scenarios. Every turn in here is two days instead of two weeks. The 1914 scenario looks at just the German offensive in the spring of, or, or sorry, fall of 1914, the initial drive on Paris. That does daily turns. Uh, but, you know, it's a very different and, and I think interesting look at the game. Uh, we're playing with a Blue Max mod. So this is a mod that ships with the game uh, that changes the art and other things like that. Uh, and... Um, yeah, we're picking this up uh, where we left off last time. This is taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel. So if you are interested in joining the live streams, there's a link in the description where you can pick these up. We have concluded this playthrough, but we do a lot of other games on Twitch like Unity of Command 2, Strategic Command, War in the Pacific, War in the East. There's a lot of games that we play there. Uh, probably going to be doing some war or, or probably going to be doing some Age of Sail, uh, Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail in the near future, as well as some more Unity of Command 2 Barbarossa. Uh, additionally, if you are interested in this game, uh, there's a link in the description to my Nexus page, which is an a official like publisher approved affiliate page where you can purchase games in that site. I think for the same price as what you find on Steam, you get a Steam key, but you actually help the channel out if you buy the game through that. So if you're interested, check that link out. And with that being said, that's four minutes. That's enough of me talking. Let's jump right back into the stream. Well, the 19th will pull back, finish off this French 36th Division, which was behind the lines. These guys will reinforce. So the fighting in the south near Mulhausen goes our way. Meanwhile, how's our uh, situation in, in northern France look? They did destroy that one unit here. Let's go ahead and reinforce these troops. Okay, replenishing our losses here. 
curious though, the 12th, it's a detachment, not a division, huh? So the British deploy no new units. The French deploy several, actually. They're up to 96 units. The Americans are still at eight. It's a detachment, you say, huh? It's two entrenchment. Can we weed them out with artillery? One hundred and ninety fifth division attacks in the north. Belgian artillery firing in support. Both these units on the Channel Coast, by the way, are detachments, which in theory could make a breakthrough easier. I didn't want to do that. Okay, so we'll move those troops back into position, replug that gap, reinforce these casual these troops that lost some casualties or took some casualties. Got five shells here. This British fourth division is in a bit of a salient. These guys can't attack, so we'll hold off attacking there. This British 39th, however, is an open ground. Fortunately, all the troops around it have already moved. Okay. Damn, I wish I could move someone in there. I don't really have the movement points, so I guess it's enough to just hurt them. And so they're entrenching back at Sousson. Again, I have no artillery to, to sort of get them out. Troops in the south did not move. So let's just bypass them, I guess. Destroy this French artillery unit. Okay. Can we go for so oh, What's their entrenchment level here? It's only going to get better. Three out of five. What if we recon it? It is a national morale objective, so we definitely want to take it if we can. Wow. So there's like softer targets we could go for, the enemy artillery, for example, being one. But I'm trying to take this objective. Which is a national morale objective. Oh God. Alright, so we took the objective. We did take some casualties there. Or at least we destroyed the objective. We didn't take it yet. Now we took it. Let's reinforce these tanks. Got a giant ass gap in my front line here.
Don't have any new units this turn, but I can operate some of these guys in. So the new units that we got last turn will operate into this front line. A very thin front line here guarding our right and cutting off the 55th division. It'll be interesting to see if they try and counterattack their way out. This artillery needs to move. In theory, I could operate them forward, but I don't have anywhere to move them to. They can't frickin' move! God, their mobility sucks so bad, and I keep blocking them with units. Alright. Well, in any event, we've got a nice, nice giant breach in the line. None of these troops are dug in. Most of the troops on our front, like they're going to pull this unit back, this unit back. They're not going to want headquarters units on the front. So the units they move in likely won't be entrenched either. They do have some troops blocking our total breakthrough, but they're all detachments, so they're weaker. They're not full-blown divisions. Um, and we'll get a national morale boost for taking Sousson. I'm curious if the British will attack south with their 20th division again. French morale is currently at 87%. The British are at 89. The Germans are at 83. I guess the only positive here is these guys are rebuilding their ammunition stockpile while they sit around and do nothing. Um, 71st Territorials. So we have kind of broken out. I don't know. Do they have anything at... Yeah, they do have a, a unit here. My, my southeastern breakthrough may not... I haven't deployed a ton of troops to it. So it's not too big of a hindrance, but it hasn't really done much for me yet. So we destroyed that territorial regiment. And we widened the breach a little bit. Shifting some of our reserves from another spot in the front. Can we reinforce these guys? can. All right, we'll do that. Thanks for the silo, Swiss Smog, and J1 Earhart. No Chet WTV as well. All right, I really think... I don't know. I'm, I'm worried that if I withdraw some of my artillery from the Verdun area, the enemy may go on the offensive. But I am tempted to move some of these guns... to try and expand the breakthrough here at Valmy, where I don't have enough units to really exploit it. But maybe drive, maybe move some of them north as well. Mm. Right, this unit is almost up to full ammunition complement, so let's go ahead and use the ammo they've got. At least to get this detachments entrenchments down to zero so we can attack them with some crack troops. The goal here just to the southeast of Verdun is more attrition than anything. We destroyed that enemy unit and I will gladly invite them back into that salient. Meanwhile, it's attacked to the north as well against another... This is a division, so it may not be as e easily overwhelmed. But anywhere we can inflict casualties on the French... Every unit they lose impacts their national morale. Pro Consul, thanks for the bits. 
So we'll go two to four here. And we got another enemy division. Southeast of Verdun. So two enemy divisions lost here for the French. So they were back up to 96 units, or two units. I guess one of them was a detachment. They're back down to 91. If we take a look at losses, the French have lost 14 units. The British, three. The Germans, one so far. I mean, I don't know. Maybe with these kind of isolated, really focused attacks, Verdun is assailable. Doesn't look like there's much in the rear back here, so I did advance these troops into this new position. This unit here would be a salient, so I'm not going to try and attack there. Or would, this unit would be in a salient. None of those other units can attack profitably, so we won't. Um, this Belgian unit here, the first division is... Any chance this artillery can finish this detachment off? No. I think this is supposed to be the Paris gun right here. Let's go ahead and move this guy down toward our main offensive. Well, maybe not. I can't do anything with them up there at this turn. So let's attack this British unit here. Hurt their morale pretty mu uh, pretty heavily. Didn't really affect their entrenchment. Two shells, four shells. We'll let them replenish their stocks. All right. So we've got 354 more points. Can we purchase new stuff? Let's replace the 38th division, which we lost. We get it for half price. We can also afford a level one AV7, not the K-Wagen, but we can afford a level one tank. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see here, we'll get that tank in May of 18, so May 16th, still a little ways away. You can see next turn, it looks like we'll get some new crack divisions at Ath, at Sedan. So that'll be nice. Those are more troops transferring west. I already used these recon planes. But... Let's go ahead and end this turn. See what uh, April has in store for us. German morale is boosted by the capture of Sousson. French morale falls due to the loss. German Paris gun bombards the French capital from near Lyon. Actually, that isn't the Paris gun up in the north then. Hungry German soldiers plunder Sousson's looking for food. So that could be bad from a morale perspective because one of the things with the, the offensives against the... Um, the French in 1918, the French and, and British in 1918, is as the Germans overran these positions and they saw just the sheer magnitude of supplies that was available to the French actually hurt their morale. At least that's one of the myths. I don't know how true it is, but that's one of the stories you always hear about World War One is that these German troops break into these Allied depots and they just see stock upon, you know, just wall upon wall of supplies and food and they'd been basically borderline starving in their own trenches and their own supply situation so they get these this, this loot but as soon as the war starts to turn on them as soon as the offensives start to lose their steam the germans had seen this they had seen these massive hordes of rations and so there's there's this impending sense of doom of that they you know how the heck do we you know how the heck do we win when we're starving and they've got all of this you know it's just it's clearly we're outmatched ok 
Okay, a couple of enemy attacks. They're plugging the holes in a few places with some new units. They're swinging some more troops in the south there. I don't know why. I think that's like a weird script um, where the AI just thinks like, oh, there's a gap here in the line, so we should try and exploit it. And it's not always the wisest thing to do. The 55th Division of the French suffers some attrition here. These guys are cut off. British income increases as reserves are released from the UK. So there are... I guess some emergency reinforcements are going to be coming in for the British. Meanwhile, we've got two new divisions of our own coming in this turn. We'll wait to deploy those. All right, let's reinforce these guys before we forget. Let's see some British Mark V tanks. I think we're going to hold off in the north. I don't have the artillery to pursue an offensive here. I do have quite a few infantry reserve units up here in Belgium, though. We may be able to shift those south to support our offensive. Let's do one bombardment, though, against this unit to get rid of... I think we can get rid of its ground cover. Actually, it's going to give me a 0-1. to one. Let's see if we can get a free, free kill on him. Nice. One to six. This 39th British Division has no cover. So we destroyed it. So another British Division destroyed. The Americans still are at eight, but the British are at 57. The French are at 96. So the French replaced all their losses last turn. Anything we can do to keep the pressure up, though. German morale has just surpassed French morale. We've got the first tank core here. Let's use it against this enemy unit here. Zero to eight. Hell yeah, brother. All right, we'll finish those guys off. Clear that, uh, that enemy unit in our rear. The Americans have deployed the 3rd Division near Pharaoh on Talanos. Let's reinforce these guys on the front. So it's going to be a bit of a pause here for these guys who are getting reinforcements. Got to clear the front line for my artillery, though. some recon over these guys. Spad interceptors doing some damage to both our own fighters and recon bombers, but we'll get some recon over the Americans there. Doesn't look like there's any troops around there, so we'll go ahead and attack at a 1-6. to six. Surprised. I could march them, force march them into position? No, I can't. Can't get anybody up there. We did take the position. That's a key rail junction there, you can see. around here. So the Americans are plugging the gap by the look of it. We just destroyed one American division. We've got an American detachment here. Two more American divisions over here. Wow! The entire American Expeditionary Force is here. Right, can those guys get reinforced? No, they can't. So we'll pull them over here. Can't move my artillery up forward and very far. All 
Alright, so we've broken through. The enemy's forming a new defensive line here near Chateau Thury. I kind of feel like our next focus should be Reims to take that National Morale Center and push the front forward a little bit. This is a little bit of a, of a bulge that's developing here, and it, it's going to take a lot of troops to hold that front. Let's try and knock out the 87th division, which is a crack division here, but it's on our flank here on this this right part of our advance. We may have gone a little bit too far to the east to start the second prong. One to five. All right, so we broke through here near the Argon. We'll surround the enemy unit at Valmy. Recon aircraft over a bit. But we're going to try and take Valmy next turn. I wish I had more troops to... More troops in reserve to plug in some of these gaps. I do have some in reserve in the north. Probably operate some of them south, but to where? To try and give this offensive a little bit more punch bring in two reserve divisions from the Belgian theater. All right, we'll attack this 163rd, mainly just to weaken it in the event it wants to try and hit us in the flank here. Two divisions are coming up, so they should be able to help. Um, let's hit these troops. Fifth Army Artillery has a fair bit of artillery at shells in reserve. So let's use them up and try and destroy the 50th division here on the Verdun front. Got it. I'm assuming there's enemy troops in here in the forts. But I've got no recon there, so I don't know that I want to advance into this position. It would also put me in a salient and lose my entrenchment. So I think we'll take the uh, enemy unit being destroyed as a victory, a, a big enough victory in of itself. Let's go ahead and reinforce these troops who fought last turn. But again, we're trying to turn the southeastern section of Verdun into a bit of a bloodbath here for the enemy. So that they are have too much stress on too many different points in the line. Alright, that unit can actually reinforce because we drove the enemy back. Part of me says pursue, but uh, All right, what's the American strength at? Seven units. They just lost one. The French are up to seventeen losses. The British four. The Americans one. The Germans one. Do the railway guns at Lille have longer range? I don't know. We'd have to check. 
I don't think so. Let's move this artillery piece here. Headquarters into Leon. Move our recon bombers a little bit closer to the front. All some of our fighters. Pretty damn big job on the enemy morale, though. I'll give them that. That seems to be their primary benefit is just a morale hit. Okay. All right, so we have some new units. The first division is arriving at Saddam. Six at Ath. Got about 560 points left. Not really any research I want to pour it into. I mean, theoretically, we could spend up to 1,000 in R&D. We're spending 895. Uh, the only real thing we could pump it into is either anti-aircraft or fighters. Any aircraft could be useful against the AI. Well, with 560, I'd rather spend it on some other stuff. So let's go back to tank core. We're already purchasing the max. Uh, artillery, we could probably use some more. Cavalry, I don't really know how useful they'll be or not. Ground attack bombers might be useful. We'll purchase two ground attack fighters. Or bombers. They could be useful in trying to recon or break up positions or things like that. We need another headquarters unit, but we don't have any available. We're already stacked out there. Also get some more fighters. Detachments, they're useful as line fillers. Yep, oak. If you if you've got an I wouldn't put them in a in a salient, but they're definitely useful as like filling filling holes in the line. So the next objectives on the French line from a national morale perspective aren't until you get to Paris. In theory we've we could go for reams to try and expand the front here to hurt their morale as well. That might not be a bad idea. I'm curious to see how aggressive the AI gets. Progress in armored warfare technology. Oh great, the rain. I'm sure that'll help our offensive. Yeah, Sean Mack, you might be right. I don't know that I have enough reserves to push more than one break. But I've also got to keep the pressure up in multiple places in my opinion, otherwise they're just going to shift troops and the brakes will be quickly closed down. My, my real hope, I think, is having a lot of these little sort of pinprick offensives where they've got to keep plugging in reserves and, and they lose disproportionate to what we lose. Meanwhile, we keep pressing at the one break. The British also definitely have the ability to launch offensives in the northern portion while we're trying to attack the French. So it's really important in my mind to keep them off balance. But as you can see here, they're launching this offensive here. Um, very effectively. They're going to destroy that division there at Lens and then take Lens with a... I don't know that putting a British cavalry unit in there was terribly smart, but... There's no rain on the British front, but at least no counteroffensive on the uh, on the French front, I suppose. Oh, I forgot about that unit in the south. French crack division arrives. Also some French cavalry. I always, I always like to engage cavalry in the open. They don't do so well. Hopefully the rain stops for our turn. Nope. And I can't fly in the rain, so I can't get recon. All right, so where did we lose that one unit on the British front up here? Let's get rid of the French cavalry's entrenchments and then let's wipe these guys out. I think we can destroy this first cavalry division. A 
without loss, almost, anyway. I hate that. You're better off just leaving a gap in your frickin' line. So this unit might die next turn because it just took 40% casualties. and destroy this British detachment again just to put pressure so they've got to plug a hole. Got it. Push forward into the gap there, destroy some Belgian artillery as well. In theory, we're threatening Newport. So we'll see if they feel like they've got a press. Also, if I advance near... Well, I don't want to put myself into that salient. Huh. Detachments do have... Or railguns do have two range rather than one. Um, key part in that British elite unit's morale mainly is that that that, that railgun's goal. All right, so can this guy move here? He can. So let's do this. Let's move these guys here to attack the French artillery. here with these elite troops. Pursue here, go after this enemy artillery, wipe that unit out. There's a lot of enemy artillery in this direction. So we just kind of broke out a little bit to the west. There doesn't seem to be a strong position here. They are building a pretty strong position here on these American units. 93, 56. But to the west here, they're less well entrenched. these guys. I can't. Right. There's a there's two lines of troops here. I didn't actually mean to do that. Whatever, we just destroyed the sixtieth French division. destroy the 9th Brit French Division, which is also a crack outfit. OK, 
Okay, I do not have enough reserves here in the middle of our line. Let's pour more of these crack troops that are just arriving now. So two new crack divisions railing into Sosons. We'll try and operate our artillery forward too. South, I'm going to try and expand this breach. I've got way too many troops. In dicey positions. Could we just... Maybe shift our line this way a little bit. Troops? <laughs> yeah, I like that. One side has cracked troops, the other side has cracked troops. Zedagar, thanks for the follow. Let's take Valmy. Zero to six, I'll take that. Oh, but you lied. Alright, so Valmy falls. Good news for us. In theory, we could try and cut off this Verdun, create a Verdun pocket, but I don't have the troops for that. shorten my lines a little bit. Can't recon because of the stupid rain, but despite the, the rain, our attacks seem to be going pretty well. In theory, that'll allow me to shorten my front a little bit. We, we could try and go with the World War II tactic of make pockets and maybe drive toward Epperny and then knock all these units out here near Reims. This artillery. I'm gonna make a concerted effort to go for Reims just for a national morale perspective, but also because I think it'll allow us to knock a bunch of these units off the front line and maybe free up some additional reserves. I don't know. There's a little bit of a scatterbrained approach. At least I feel like it is. Destroy that division here, the 100 and something colonial division. Reinforce the troops that weren't involved. See if we can destroy the 126th to 27th division, which is also a crack division. The rain actually seems to help the offensive against fixed positions. I'm wondering if that's because it would do, I mean, like, obviously breakthrough is probably not as easy. But I'm wondering if it uh, reduces the defender's abilities. Maybe they can't see as well to, to like shoot you guys at range with machine guns or something. So we just destroyed another French division. The casualties mount. All right, everybody, I'm going to jump in here and wrap this up. We'll pick things up exactly where I just started talking in our next video.
but this seems like as good of a spot as any to to wrap it up. I know we're in the middle of a turn, but um, with that being said, guys, uh, we're at like 45 minutes. So we'll pick this up in our next video. I hope you guys did enjoy this video, Strategic Command World War I, the Ludendorff Offensive. Uh, we have, I think, completely broken through the front, sort of in the hinge uh, near, near Paris where the line veers north. Uh, and so we are driving on Paris slowly, maybe not like a full on breakthrough, but we're grinding down the enemy forces in front of us. We've broken out of trench warfare in that front. We're also making some progress in other other sections of the front to keep the pressure on the allies so they can't, you know, just rush all their troops and throw them in front of Paris. Overall, it's been a bloody affair. It's hardly decided yet, but things are going pretty well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, though. Leave your thoughts below. Let me know if you want to see more of this. This was taken from a live stream from my Twitch channel. So as I said, there's a link at the start. There is a link in the description to check that out. And if you are interested in picking this game up, there's a link to my Nexus GG page, which is an official publisher authorized reseller channel where you can buy a game, get a Steam key, but you also have the ability to help the channel out if that's something you're interested in. So, um... Yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your thoughts below. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.